So as you can see, it is thermal throttling. They use more power, the faster they go. All right, guys, today we're gonna to be answering the age old debate. Do these i9 2019 MacBook Pros thermal throttle? Now we're gonna be answering this on both Windows and Mac OS. I'm gonna be showing you how they perform an extreme benchmarking test to see how good and juicy these CPUs are. And I'll be showing you guys how to get the best performance. Do you disable hyper-threading? Do you use only two cores instead of six? Do you use eight cores? What are you supposed to do? You're gonna find this all out in this video today. So first, let's start up with some Windows benchmarking. I've got Intel Power Gadget over here to let us know what the frequency is and my power management is set to best performance. First up, let's get a bit of geek benching. You can see that the fans are still quiet at this stage and our CPU frequency is going between 4.3 and 2.3 depending on if we're doing a task or waiting for the next task to begin. 5,200 on single core and 27,000, almost 20,000 on the multi-core. Not the fastest I've seen. I've seen it go faster in macOS, but that's the state of Windows at the moment. Now let's do some Synvention. Now the CPU here, we're at 3.4 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz, 2.6 gigahertz, 3.8 gigahertz, 2.6. It's bouncing up and down, 3.4. Temperature is at 96 degrees Celsius. So perhaps this guy is thermal throttling. It's not going below the base clock speed but it's definitely going up and down to maintain the heat. But our score, 1350. That's pretty much how fast it goes on macOS as well. So on Windows, you're not losing out on that much performance. Now let's do something serious. I've got an app here. This guy, he's called IDA64, and this guy's gonna load the CPU up. And it's gonna destroy it. It is. Oh my, look at that. It's overloaded. All right, so we are hitting 96 degrees, 100 degrees. 92, 98 degrees. It's constantly bouncing between 90 and 100 degrees centigrade. And our package frequency is going between 2.2 to 3 gigahertz, 2.2 to 3 gigahertz, 2.6, 2.2 to 3.4. Officially, the CPU should be a 2.3 minimum frequency, but we are seeing it drop to 2.2 over here, right there it says 2.2. And our package temperature is constantly hitting 100 degrees. All right, so as you can see, it is thermal throttling on Windows. Hopefully this will get improved with driver updates like they did with last year's edition. But now let's jump into Mac OS and see if it really does throttle where it counts. So I'm back on Mac OS and I'm gonna be using the Prime 95 app to see how much cooking we can do on this MacBook Pro. So as you can see, it's a nice, thick, solid line. Temperature is at 89 degrees, just locked in. The maximum I've seen it go is 91. It just bubbles between 89 to 91. Core frequency is at 2.9, it's a nice, locked in, solid line. The maximum I've seen it go is three gigahertz. The lowest I've seen it go is 2.8 for like a second while it's switching iterations on the algorithm. And it's just locked in 89 degrees. This test has been running for about 10 minutes now and it's just locked in there. It's just flat line. There's no bobbing up and down. There's no throttling and it is going faster than the advertised speed. And this is, this is with 16 threads going at the same time. This is eight cores being hit all at the same time. I'm just gonna launch activity monitor to show you what's happening in the background. So you can see over here, look at every single thread just being completely dominated dominated by Prime 95, it's using 1550 CPU utilization. That's all the cores being used at once. And it did slow down just then to 2.7 because I was using Activity Monitor. But as you can see, it's nice and solid, this test, this CPU stress test. Something to note, I've had some people say, hey, the MacBook Pro, it doesn't run fast unless you got the power plugged in. Check this out. Just unplugged the power cord. Let's see if it still maintains its fast speeds. So look at that, it's going three gigahertz at the moment. I'm gonna plug the power cord back in and see if these speeds are maintained or if it slows down a little. So 
so it's still going 92.6 temperature, speed still going at three, still sucking up about 50 watts of power, unplug the power cord, and we're still going 91.7 temperature, speed still at 2.9. So there you have it, with the power cord plugged in or not plugged in, it runs pretty much exactly the same. The only way I see it slowing down is if you plug in too many accessories, in which case, if the battery doesn't have enough power to power the GPU, the CPU, and the accessories, you might hit a power limit and throttle based on that, but plugging the power, not plugging the power, doesn't make a difference here. All right, that's enough of that. We hit this test, coming into 20 minutes now, still three gigahertz, temperature still 90 degrees, 93 to be precisely, and utilization hitting 98.5% of the CPU. Seems pretty stable. Let's now go into the fun stuff and do some Bitcoin mining where we'll actually find out how cores and threads all affect performance. All right, so I'm using an application here called Minergate and I'm mining some Bitcoin. I've got 16 threads up and running and I'm getting 120 hashes a second. My temperature is at 55 degrees. I'm using 100% of the CPU because I've got 16 threads which will utilize hyper threading, but I'm only getting 120 hashes a second. I'm gonna drop the threads down to eight and see if my hash rate goes up or down. Straight away, I've dropped it down to eight and my hash rate shot up to 250 hashes a second. Straight away. So I'm no longer utilizing 100% of the CPU, I'm only using 50% because I'm only using eight threads. So you can see using this algorithm, hyper-threading actually slows down your system. Let's keep on going. I'm gonna switch it up to one core and see how fast we can see our frequency. So you can see right here, it's going 4.25. Our temperature is at 72 and we're going at 4.3 gigahertz. Hashing wise, we're getting 70 hashes a second. Now, if we switch this up to two, we should be getting 136, 130, 65 times two. So we are getting 130. So we pretty much doubled the hashing by introducing another thread. Our frequency is still going at 4.25. So what we're seeing right now is you can go from using one core to two cores with no loss on performance. You're still getting 100% of performance from each core if you're using only two cores. Let's jump up to four. Officially, that should go from 130 to 260 when we switch over to four cores, let's see. So it's close, 246, 250. And our frequency is 4.1 gigahertz. Our temperature is at 90 degrees, 94 degrees. All right, so when you go from one core to two core, you still get 100% of the performance. Each core can do a maximum of 65 hashes a second. So one core to two core gets you 130 hashes a second. However, when you go from two cores to four cores, you only get 250 hashes a second. So you're losing 10 hashes a second. It's still good. You still get about 90% utilization, but you start to degrade the performance of each individual core. Why is that? It isn't because of the temperature. I think it's more to do with the power you can get to the CPU. It's known that Intel CPUs got their maximum when only two cores are engaged. So now let's go from two cores to eight cores and see what the hash rate is. If we're doubling, it should go from 250 to 500, but I think we're not gonna get there. So that's pretty interesting. As soon as we switched on all eight cores, our temperature dropped from about 90 degrees all the way down to 75, and our CPU dropped to 2.9 gigahertz. Interestingly, we went from 250 hashes a second to 267. So by going from four cores to eight cores, we've only increased 17 hashes a second. That is insanely poor performance, but you can hear that the fan levels have gone down and also the temperature of the CPU has gone down. So when we have all cores engaged, the CPU down clocks to a lower speed, but it still produces more output in total than hitting four cores hard at once. And interestingly enough, when we're using four cores at once, we're using 40 watts of power. However, now we're using eight cores and it says 20 watts of power. So we've halved the amount of power usage 
doubled the amount of cores and we're still getting a faster hash rate by 17 hashes a second. So using eight cores is more energy efficient in total. Now, let's see what happens when we disable hyper-threading. So right now, hyper-threading turned on, we're getting about 257, 256, and I'm gonna turn off hyper-threading. It dropped down to, no, it's 264, 265, 267, 269, 265, 240. So straight up with hyper-threading disabled, this algorithm seems to not utilize it. It seems to perform poorer with it on when we start using 16 threads. So in this one, it doesn't really make a difference with hyper-threading on or off, but I'll show you where it does make a difference. So there you go. We've got two cores activated. We're getting 130 hashes a second and our frequency is going 4.15. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable hyper-threading and I'm going to make it only use two cores maximum. And let's see what happens. Our frequency is shot up to 4.6 gigahertz. We're still getting around 132, 130 hashes a second. So this algorithm hasn't improved, but I guess because all the other operations are operating on these CPUs, our frequency has just shot up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one core. Officially, it should be 65, but let's see what we get with it. So here we only have two cores enabled and our algorithm is only utilizing one of the cores. And here we're shooting up to 67 hashes a second, 68 hashes a second. And that is as fast as you can take these beasts. Limit it to two cores and it will go 4.6 gigahertz, almost close to the advertised speeds of 4.8. Of course, you won't be able to hit the maximum speed because Intel CPUs can only go at their maximum speed when you're in temperatures of 50 degrees or less. And I am 84 degrees solid, rock solid. All right, that's the end of today's fun benchmarking. Stay tuned for the next one, we'll be doing some gaming. But I guess what we learned here today is that when you're using eight cores at once, we're only using 20 watts of power and we're getting the maximum spread of performance. When you use four cores, the cores can go up to four gigahertz However, the power usage shoots up to 40 watts. So you go a lot faster, but more power. The reason why this is, Intel cores, they use more power the faster they go. It's an exponential curve. So it's kind of like driving a car. When you drive it as fast as possible, you eat up so much fuel, the fuel economy is bad. Whereas you drive a little bit slower, you get better fuel economy, and that's how these cores work. The faster each core goes, the more power they use to get to that speed. Whereas if you can have an algorithm to spread your load over to eight cores, it will actually perform better, slightly better than four cores. So it's not that much. It only went to 265 instead of 250. It's only 15 hashes a second more, but the power usage was half. That I found was very, very interesting. Of course, if you want the fastest, fastest speeds at 30 watts, that you got to limit your core usage to two and then it can go up to 4.6 gigahertz and probably the 2.4 edition of the i9 can go 4.8 because there's definitely thermal headroom. It's only going to 82 degrees at the moment, so there's definitely room for improvement there. And regarding thermal throttling on long loads, it still respected the rules as I described them. So I gotta say on macOS, no, there's no thermal throttling that I can detect. Let me know if you know of a way to make them thermal throttle. Maybe we'll put it in the oven, baked it a little bit, had some fun with that. Uh, I've got Apple Care, accidental damage. Yeah, could do that. If, you're, if you force me to do it, I will do it. But on Windows, bootcamp drivers, they do thermal throttle. We saw that with the IDA64 test, unfortunately. But um, you can still game. And you'll be finding out about that in the next video because I'll be doing some MacBook Pro serious stuff. Gaming, yeah. Officer on deck. Eddie, soldier. All right, today we're going to be testing out the 2019 i9 eight core MacBook Pro to see if she can handle Mac OS gaming, Windows gaming. And for the ultimate experience, we're going to be hooking her up to an eGPU with Vega 64 graphics. It's time to get gaming, soldiers. They use more power the faster they go. And for those interested in how the 2019 performed against 2018, this is the 2018's results. Using six cores, we can only hash 125 hashes a second. That is, that is, uh, that is less than what four cores on 2019 can do. 
It's actually around what two cores of 2019 can do because this algorithm in particular specializes in the utilization of L3 cache 2019. The i9 version has 16 megabytes of that, whereas my one only has nine. Regarding Prime 95, yeah, thermals do get pretty high on this 2018. They get to around 98, which is six degrees higher. Well, eight degrees even higher than the 2019. However, the frequency is very stable. Here we can see it rocking above three gigahertz and I tested it out for half an hour and it also didn't throttle like it did on launch.